Hey, uh, YouTubers, Tazman here bringing you another episode of Foundry VTT from the ground up. And in our last episode, we finally kind of finished what I'm calling the character creation. Um, it wasn't absolutely terrible. Uh, there's a lot of things I think that still could make it even better, more streamlined. But... Uh, it's it's definitely a work in in progress i mean foundry vtt has been released officially however the that's not to be confused with the different systems um i don't know necessarily that the system for 5e has been officially you know called yep this is as good as it gets you know we'll we'll add little things here and there I kind of feel like it, it hasn't, and part of that would definitely be the lack of, ha excuse me, having backgrounds and also having races. I think those are some things that you can get away with not having them because you can kind of custom code the stuff yourself or add the information in yourself. However, I still think that it would be much better if they gave you compendium options or item options, whatever, where... <clears throat> where you can actually create races and backgrounds so that you can actually have the full player's handbook. If you have that, you can actually transcribe that or turn it into an actual compendium for yourself for future reference and stuff. <clears throat> anyway, enough of that rant. In this episode, we are going to try to figure out, and I do say we're going to try and figure out some of these things in items. Uh, you know, just to really look into what the different options are, see if we can figure them out. There isn't really a wiki page as we went and looked that actually contains the items, or at least I haven't been able to find it if there is one. So, um, these will be educational for you and for me at the same time, but uh, I thought it, it would be good to just kind of work through these things and see if we can figure them out. So as we learned when we were doing through all the different options and stuff, and when we got to items, there's lots of items you can create. You could create weapons, you could create equipment, consumables, tools, loot. There's your classes, spells, feats, and backpack. Uh, and that one we were also wondering some things about. But this is where I really think there should be one option for backgrounds and one option for uh, races and I do th also feel that the class could have a lot more done to it right now uh, if you ask me they're kind of lacking but uh, of course this is nothing bad against uh, foundry itself uh, that's not class features uh, if we go under classes here with the SRD. So if you look under Barbarian, for example, this is what I've done. Wait, is this the one I've done or have they actually changed it? I can't remember. I don't remember doing this part. So maybe they've actually done what I was thinking they should do. Which would be awesome because... Um, well, no, that's classes... SRD items... Where's the one I did? Let me find that real quick. Class features. Classes here. And this is my DD. Yeah. Wait, I don't even have mine. I don't... I don't remember adding things like this that were clickable. But I did... I was going through and doing that... And I definitely don't think I got down here. So maybe they've actually done this, which is awesome. Uh, because it used to be... Let's let's look at some of the others, because I know I didn't do Bard for... Oh, they have. This is awesome. Classes are no longer lacking. Uh, it used to be that there was no... No information other than maybe as a Bard you gained this, and then this was the whole rest of it. So I really like that. Good job. Uh, to the author of the 5e thing and mine's not even in there now I guess I don't know anyway so those are some things I don't know if he's if he was watching my video and said oh yeah that's that's a good idea and figured out how to do it but awesome work um, 
like I said, the other thing I think would be really good would be to have the backgrounds and races. Um, so anyway, let's just go in here and we're going to look at these things. So we have a weapon here, Battle Axe, and I believe it was the tokenizer that if we call it Battle Axe, it will automatically go and try and find an image within its actual library of the thing, which is totally cool. I love that. Um, and then we can add whatever information here under the details page we have whether it's proficient whether it's equipped now this is where we had one question because this battle axe is just a battle axe now I imagine when we move this over to a character then we would change it to equipped but it shouldn't change this one I don't think let's let's try this real quick uh, if we go grab our character here and we do 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 go to inventory and we give him a battle axe so let's just oh he already has a battle axe let's give him a second battle axe <laughs> we'll get rid of that first one um so if we come in here it does say not equipped so maybe this is talking about the default state of it in which case you probably wouldn't want to say proficient either because the default state for a battle axe is not proficient. Anyone that picks it up isn't going to be proficient. Now identified, um, I'm not exactly sure where you put the name, like what you, when it's identified, maybe it just calls it a weapon when it's unidentified. And then of course if you have an attuning type of thing. Now we have lots of types of weapons. We kind of went over these. We have our simple melee simple ranged martial melee martial ranged neutral weapons not exactly sure what a neutral weapon is uh, or uh, not neutral natural sorry i do know what a natural weapon is this is like finding a tree branch or something i can't read today i apologize <laughs> improvised weapon uh, wouldn't that i don't know maybe that a tree branch might be an improvised weapon i'm not exactly sure what the difference and then a siege weapon I know what that is. I don't know how you would be carrying one. Um, but yeah, so that's, this is some definite stuff to look at. So if, with that battle axe, if we go look on our character real quick, let's just check something real quick. So with battle axe here, if we click on it, we can see it does say proficient. Now that's whether I'm proficient with it or not, right? If I change something in here, does it change it here? That, let's see if I go to edit, or does it kind of create a copy of it here? So if I go in here and I say that, proficient, no, it doesn't because we actually changed, if I go change that it's equipped, and then it's there, save at the bottom, no. Okay, so it does look like it is creating a copy of it, which is actually really good. Because if we come in here, close this one, reopen it, yeah, it doesn't. So my guess is that you want to not have these checked as a default state. However, once it's given to the person, then you'd want to check if they're proficient with it, if it's equipped identified like I said I'm not exactly sure is it just called a weapon if it's not identified if we uncheck that and we drag that into our character is it still going to be called a battle axe or just a weapon uh, whoops we want to go right back here and here and now let's drag the battle axe again yeah it's still called a battle axe Not proficient, proficient. I'm not sure what it would do. Like, for example, and a lot of this I base off of Fantasy Grounds because I'm quite familiar with Fantasy Grounds and played a lot with it. Um, so I know, like, if you mark something as unidentified, there's actually a second field called uh, label for when it's unidentified. So if I say something is 
identified, then it would use its main name. If it's unidentified, it actually gives you an option, at least with like, well, no, it gives it with everything. Uh, it gives you an option to give it a label. So, for example, I just call it an axe. Or, for example, if this is, I keep saying for example, if this is like battle axe of strength or something of cleaving, um, that would be the actual name of the thing. However, if I just pick it up, to me it's just an axe with maybe some special symbols on it. So I would think somewhere in here, and I'm not seeing anything that says that, where you would actually give it a name. Maybe this, no, that's just chat message flavor. So I'm not exactly sure what identify does. And attuned means that you have it, and until you attune to it, you use it enough to really understand how it works and stuff, or what its special abilities are. Uh, you don't actually get those things. Now, I would imagine somewhere in here would also be something that would say, okay, when you're attuned to it, now it does a plus two extra or something, but I don't see that either. Uh, then we have our weapon properties, ammunition. This is if it's arrows, bolts, bullets, I guess, if you have them. Finesse, uh, for those of you who don't know, finesse uh, means that it can either be used as a strength type weapon. You can use your strength modifier or you can use your dex modifier. Firearm, kind of obvious, that's a firearm. Focus weapon, not 100% sure what that means. Um, because it's not talking about spells. We actually have things that are spells. So a focus weapon, I'm not sure what that means. Heavy means, I. doesn't that mean it's two-handed? No, because it has a two-handed. What is the difference between heavy, light? I know you like heavy. Maybe it's so you don't have to say crossbow. You could just say heavy there, crossbow, light but usually you put that in the heading, I'm not sure. Loading would be like a bow and arrow, a gun, something where you actually have to load it. Uh, a battle axe, obviously you don't have to load. Reach means that it exceeds, uh, melee weapons generally only reach five, the five foot around you. Uh, reach would mean it goes 10 or more, depending on the reach. Reload, can we just talk about reload? Loading and reload. Maybe this is more for bullets, because it actually has a clip or something? I'm not sure. Uh, returning is, you know, if you have arrows that have returning on them or something, you actually get uh, some of them back. Usually returning is used with a percentage or something like that, uh, where, you know, if I have 20 arrows and it, I get one that returns, then I still have 20 arrows. If I fire five and only two return, then obviously I have 17 arrows. Uh, special, everything special. I, I'm not sure what special is. And I, I don't think these actually activate other fields. So these are things that definitely would be good in the wiki. Thrown obviously is if it's thrown two-handed means that uh, you have to use two hands for it. Versatile means that you can either use it one-handed or two-handed and there usually is something in here that would say, there it is, versatile damage would be 1d10 plus your modifier and uh, regular is 1d8 plus your modifier. And where do we tell it our modifier? Ability modifier is default. So I'm assuming it will always think this is strength. If I'm using, well, if it were versatile, then I could use dex also. So strength is the main modifier. So that makes sense. Uh, activation cost. This is, uh, if, if it's something that says two, that means I have to ready it in my first action and use it in the second action. So this I can actually use right away. Activation condition. I guess some things have a condition. I haven't really ran into many things that actually have conditions associated with them. So uh, not 100% sure um, about that one. 
target this would be uh, I believe this is the range right here and the unit of measurement whether it's uh, feet miles self touch I guess touch really isn't a unit of measurement and then um, also here is is it uh, target is the enemy is it an ally is it a cone uh, just any creature some of these kind of seem like they overlap also uh, to me but they also might not <laughs> I don't know uh, so then you have your range this is also where the reach is if it's a reach weapon then you would come here and say it's 10 foot meaning that it can reach up to 10 feet away instead of just the 5 foot or I guess you could have a mega reach with a mile or something uh, duration is how long it lasts and you would say once again I don't think with a battle axe example it's not gonna have a duration but maybe if you have a battle axe of poison or something uh, you could stick a duration on there uh, to be completely honest I don't think these all these different options other than a few of them actually have mechanics built into the game most of them are going to be mostly for your reference or uh, for your own knowledge of stuff limited uses this is maybe if I had throwing daggers and they were only for throwing or some darts maybe uh, I could say uh, two of two meaning that I have two and then this is when it recharges does it have charges uh, meaning that uh, once the charges are gone it's just done uh, does it reset on a short rest which is a minimum of one hour a long rest which is a minimum of eight hours or a whole day which is 24 hours so we have that uh, next we have the weapon attack so action type this is what kind of action type it is what kind of what kind of weapon it is I guess so you have the melee which is you know hand to hand or type thing ranged is ranged obviously spell casting see now this I guess I would think this would be in spells and it might actually share some of these fields with the other ones so a spell maybe if it had a spell power to it like a battle axe a magic missile or something I guess uh, but that wouldn't be melee hmm. Uh, but that would, uh, if it's a saving throw, uh, if it requires a saving throw in order to do the damage, healing, ability check, utility, or other. Uh, ability modifier, this is default. I'm not sure where you actually set this. Um, I guess if you're setting it as melee, which you're not actually doing up. Well, you're setting it right here that would automatically set it as strength although if it's a dagger that's dex that is a really good question actually um, so yeah I'm not sure if where it gets this default maybe everything's strength and then you can change it not sure uh, but if if you're forcing it to be something else then you can actually do it there uh, if you have an attack roll bonus uh, this would be say this is a battle axe of plus one to your attack then you would put say plus one here and then it would actually I'm assuming automatically do the formula of 1d8 uh, plus your modifier plus this one that's up here. I don't know if it'll actually change that value. Like if we do this, can we... Let's get rid of this one and try and roll it and see if it does that, because I'm really curious. So, uh, character here has a strength of plus uh, four and a dex of plus four. I'm gonna change this just so we can tell exactly which one it is using. So that should go to plus three, plus three. So if we come in here, uh, let's go ahead and close this, and we'll add this battle axe here. Now if we're rolling on this and going here, we can see this is the attack. So this should give us the modifier, which should be strength, right? 
So we say it's normal, and it did have bonus in there. So yes, it is automatically adding that bonus. So this, yes, you would actually use in the actual item, unless you just create battle axe, and then when Umus, or well, I, I call it Umus because that's a character I used that used that image. Uh, but if I come in here, this might be the better place to actually put it, because, I don't know, maybe if I had a, Battle Axe plus one is the name of it or something. It just seems easier just to come in here really quick and give it its bonus once it's added on to the character than actually creating a Battle Axe and then another one called Battle Axe plus one and another one called Battle Axe plus two and so on and so forth. So maybe this is best to fill out once it's on the character. Then, of course, we already talked about the damage formula here is 1d8 plus mod. Oh, we were looking. It did use our strength because it's plus four. And we could override that. And once again, that's probably, for example, if I'm a, a rogue or something where dex is my primary thing, I might want to set things to that as the default. Bows, I believe, will automatically go, ranged weapons will automatically go to decks. Thrown weapons, I know daggers you can actually use strength or decks with because they're versatile in that sense. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure on that one. Uh, so we already talked about versatile. This means if I'm using it two-handed, instead of just doing 1d8, because I've got some extra strength in it behind, behind my... Uh, swing in both hands I get a 1d10 instead. Other formula not 100% sure what this is doing um, maybe this has something to do with the saving throw this once again this part is more for a spell uh, saving throws are usually with like poison cloud or something that uh, and it tells you whether you actually uh, you know, did did damage, half damage or not. And I wonder, is there a spot in here? So, and then Battle Axe Chat. We didn't see that anywhere. That's the other thing I, I've never really figured out is where does the chat message flavor go? And we, we typed that in when we did this to see if maybe it does it in here, but I don't see it. So we're actually at 22 minutes. This is this took a little bit longer than I, I thought. Uh, if the developer of the the items, the 5e rule set is watching this, hopefully uh, you can tell me maybe there is a spot. I just don't know where it is where I can actually get more information on these things, or uh, you know. Maybe have mouse overs would be really good. So like if you mouse over, maybe they're there. Maybe we should check that. If I go in here, and sometimes if you mouse over something, it'll pop up something. It does not seem like it. That would be very handy. You know, like if I moused over loading versus reload, it would actually give me just a little bit information just saying loading is this reload is this the default for this is you know because it knows this is a uh, melee weapon is going to be strength if I mouse over I don't know anyway those are kind of some ideas and stuff we're gonna keep going through this hopefully you guys are enjoying this like I said this is going to be a learning experience not only for you but for me as well because uh, right now the wiki really doesn't have this stuff in there and as I said, there's two things I, I suspect. One is these are shared between multiple things, which is why we actually have, you know, saving throw or something like that. Um, the second thing is uh, also that uh, these are more reference type of things and not, not actually mechanics. Like the game only has that versatile so that it pops up where you're looking at it uh, in your character and it shows you it's a versatile weapon and then it's up to you to actually say okay yeah I can use this as that and, well this doesn't say because I removed it <laughs> because it's really not versatile 
Or no, it is versatile. So wait, is that not in here? Melee not equipped. It is versatile there. But that, it, I don't know. <laughs> did that change any, like if we click on the dice, did it give us an option to say whether we we're doing it? Oh yeah, versatile. So that, versatile clearly does do that where it actually gives us the other option and changes to 1d10. So that makes sense. But some of these others, I'm not 100% sure that they actually have, uh, for example, maybe the finesse is what I'm more what I'm meaning. Uh, when you have things that pop up here, although, yeah. Anyway, I'm going to ramble on and on and on and uh, get nothing said. So I'm going to go ahead and close out here. Like I said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my Discord and my other channels. If you have any recommendations, if you really don't want me to do the items and kind of trying to figure them out with you, although it's more through your comments <laughs> after the video that would be with you, but I appreciate any help you give. Uh, if you'd rather not see this type of video, let me know what you'd like to see and we'll focus on that. So that's it. Until next time, I'll be seeing you later. Bye.